Hi, everybody. Uh, this is uh, Youssef here from Circus Recordings. Um, I'm very happy to be having uh, my new friends and confidant and colleague, um, Taya Mills, here with me, having our first kind of Skype debate about um, what's happened and more about Circus Recordings and, of course, more about his history too and his competition winning skills and why I chose him as well. Right, nice, thanks. Hi everyone, I'm Taya, as you have said. Um, thanks for having me. Uh, yeah, I just had a few, we are just gonna have a chat with Yousef about um, circus recordings and um, the way the label works and all that. Some, some of the questions that I've been wanting to ask for quite a while now. So yeah, let's let's get the ball rolling, I reckon. Oh. So <clears throat> how, um, how what made you want to start Circus Recordings? Well, it was kind of, um, I'm one of those people where if someone else is doing something I and I always think, well, if they can do it, I can do it, or I'll, I'll at least give it a go. <clears throat> and I was releasing music on other labels and with varying degrees of success. And, and again, um, I just wanted to kind of, because I had the events and I was already making a lot of music, I just felt it was the right time to open up uh, what was a DJ label and to have an, a place where I can kind of decide if the music's going to come out or not rather than send demos and wait and demos and wait and demos and wait, which is even these days is still pretty much the norm. <clears throat> um, so I just put out one release and then a second and then over time learned how to turn it from a DJ label into a proper record label and that was the reason and since then obviously it's expanded into um to being quite well known i suppose yeah right so it's it started off like um you know more than built over time it hasn't always been um a massive label has it no well i mean like you know even now you know as circus recordings a massive label i would say it's 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 growing in reputation and stature of course it's uh, the reality of labels these days is it's 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 hard. But on the other hand, uh, I always make sure that people like yourself, all the artists, and everybody involved get a really um, good amount of treatment from, like I say, from uh, even A and R, from making sure that the music's mastered correctly, even mix downs if it need needs it. And then after that, we get a proper PR and a proper um, DJ mail out. And everybody gets the same opportunity. And I think because, and everybody at some point gets accounted to as well. So with all those things in mind, that's why I think it's run like a proper label. And that's why I think it's, uh, and I'll take an artist like yourself on board is uh, I'm hopefully able to help. Absolutely. I hope, I hope, I'm sure I'll be able to have, have a good input. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure I will. Um, so yeah, you've taken on me. Um, someone who doesn't really have much of a status in the um in the uh the artist world but um i have faith in myself and i feel like i do have some of the show but um would, yeah, would, would you usually give um someone that's not very well known uh, a go if you really like their music but they didn't really have any followers yeah I, I, absolutely in, in fact you know the fact when you say um they don't have any followers i i, I think of course, I'm, I'm aware that in 2017, 2018, social media and, and kind of a public presence of some variety is important. But for me, I'm old school in the way of, is the music good? Is it appropriate? Can we work with this person? Um, rather than um, have they kind of drum, managed to drum up a, a following? Ideally, you know, if someone has got a following, then it makes things slightly easier. But it's it's not on the the, the criteria for us. Um, it's always important. Firstly, is the music great? And if we're going to have a longer relationship, then can we can we get on? Um, and also, will they listen to me if I've got any advice? Which sometimes some, some people struggle with. <laughs> oh, for sure. Yeah. Um, and what about you? What, what what are your hopes and expectations from, you know, this? Um, well, like like I said, it's meant to be twelve months, but my 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 plan is just, you know, it's not really going to stop if the, if the relationship, you know, develops yeah. in the way I want it to. 
yeah, you wouldn't take on anyone that you can't be good friends with, you know? Exactly. Um, yeah, um, look, I, I'm I'm already on my mission ever since I sort of um ever since I won the competition, I've I've been um it's it sort of kick started my uh, what I, what already was my goal, but um I just really want to get my music heard and I want to learn off the best and um and 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 yeah and pretty much like most of all yeah just want, just want my music heard and and um I'd like to hopefully teach um some of the best some some tricks that I have as well so yeah Me, that's exactly. sort of that's sort of my goal I mean like, like from my perspective what what I wanted from from the competition winner wasn't like I said to you privately was um not just someone who I think I can kind of mold into uh, and develop. I want someone who can bring something to the party. And that's why, um, you know, I, I suspect and expect that you're a much more accomplished producer than me, probably um, maybe not as experienced um, in, in some ways uh, from a historical point of view, but probably from a technical point of view. And that's why I think uh, working together could be um, a real nice bit of synergy. I can't wait. I can't wait. I'm sure I actually do have. I mean, um, I'm sure I do have like a lot of things that I could teach you, and 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 vice versa. But you know, you know, every every producer has their their their, their tricks of their trade sort of thing. Everyone does it differently, so that's that's really exciting for me. I'm um, like collaborating, collaborating with other artists is like a really big thing for me. You always learn something, no matter what level they're at. Yeah, absolutely. So. I'm, I'm pretty pretty pumped to get in the studio with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm scrappy. I'm scrappy. Like you know, the way I work, it's it's yeah, a bit weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a list of questions already for you. Come on, then. How do you <laughs> how do you get that washy hat sound? You know, it's it, like <laughs> it, it. It really it really depends. Um, it really depends on. Um, on the particular track now again because i said before i'm quite scrappy i'm quite happy to just um try and get try and get a, a groove going as quick as possible and even if that means just using like kind of a layer layers of kind of a few loops and then dropping them in dropping them out gating a few of them <clears throat> just to see make to make its own its own loop but for me it's really important to make the beats really really chunky and i think via that um series of loops sometimes and obviously i'll eq and then sometimes i'll put i'll use uh sound toys to what, what, what what's the the plugin called the particular one um there's a plugin on sound toys that's called the 99 percent and it, oh. it gives it gives the width of your drums just that extra kind of like uh stereo dynamic to have more of a of a chunk so if it kicks flying through it you can still have those kind of quite busy beats with that kind of high end what you just mentioned uh in the mix yeah right okay cool i've got the sound toys back i'm gonna have a go with that awesome yeah. um also <laughs> one other one other pro uh, production question before we get like carried away with everything else um okay for for a good example is like River Star's music. He's always got like a big kick, but it sounds like it's out there. And like my rule is a kick should be straight down the center. So what's going on there? Because that because River Star's a great producer, and he's like, yeah, it sounds awesome. I just don't get it. I don't know how to make that sound. You have to. You, have to, you probably have to ask uh, Steph from River Star. I mean, like I say, I'm pretty much a lot like you. Where I was like, I like to have my kicks. Uh, center, but it, again, it could be to, it could be to do with the way he's just manipulated the sounds, and it could be he has other layers going. And you know, there's one thing about Steph; he's um, he's got so many years of experience, and he's got an amazing analog studio. So again, I can't I can't answer that question about mm. his music. Yeah, right. Okay, cool. Um, so. Um, circus record. Uh, sorry, circus. Uh, the club is in uh, Liverpool. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Hopefully, I can get over, get over there soon That's enough. The I'm, I've been working on an EP for you. I just didn't want to. Um, didn't want to send you anything that's that I wasn't a hundred percent with. But I've I've got something something big happening. So expect it soon. Okay. Cool. <laughs> cool. 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 
Um, some other questions. Um, oh, yeah, okay. So how many uh, demo submissions do you receive per month and who takes care of that? Who <coughs> listens to them? Yeah, um, we, we, we get... Sorry, dog's trying to get in on, in, on the mix here. <laughs> get down, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's just popped in. <clears throat> he... Um, Again, we, we, we get so many, it, you know, it, we, we, I think in fairness, we're, we're being quite unfair on a lot of people that send me demos via the Circus Recordings Facebook because we've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of links um, and it's obviously impossible to get through them. However, I, I do take uh, demos from complete strangers on my Facebook, which is always uh, Yousef Circus or on Twitter or Instagram, always Yousef Circus. But again, we, we just get through <clears throat> what we can. Um, I like to to critique tracks and help people um, and give them some advice about usually about their mix downs. It's not usually not about their their style because who am I to say that their style is right or wrong? It's it's their style. Um, but it, it's it's really really hard to keep up. Uh, we do our best. We've got myself and uh, James who works with me, <clears throat> and again Jonathan that runs the label. Um, yeah. But it's really, it's really hard. Sometimes we get ten. Usually we get um, multiple hundreds a month. It's really hard. Wow, that's heavy. Yeah, that's big. <laughs> that's 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 really cool that you can actually that you actually give feedback because not a lot of places do. I know that I've sent a lot of demos to a lot of places in my time, and I've never really received any feedback. To so, um, yeah, that's pretty big from you to 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 spend the time to to um yeah give people that. I think it's cool. Well, I, I, I just like to help people for first and foremost, but secondly, from a business perspective, it's kind of like new new fans. It, you know, if, if I take that moment to kind of say, look, I don't think this or that or the other, and I've connected with them, they're usually so grateful, as you say, that then they're on board. You know, and I think it's it's um, you should always connect with your audience as much as you can. Yeah, I think that'd really mean a lot to them. Like. Words coming from your your idols really they they stick with you so that's really cool that you do that yeah um so if if someone signed um to a different label are they still allowed to release with you because I, I saw um there's quite there's quite a lot of there's quite a lot of uh, artists who um are releasing with you but are also releasing with others it, yeah yeah it, it it's a bit of a grey area that one because obviously um. Again, a typical record deal would be you sign a record with those, then we get the, the two next singles, and then you see you go from there. But yeah. the reality is, you know, these producers need to get their music out um, as much as, yeah. as often as possible to be, to be able to get, get gigs, notoriety, and you know, an audience. <clears throat> so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sit there and just go look. You know, no, this must be about me, 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 sex recordings. Do you, everyone else can forget, you know, their own, own path in life. On the other hand, uh, I do think that artists that, that release with us and maybe one or two other labels over the year and keep things less, um, yep. I have to say that I'm probably more likely to be able to get behind them um, at the events uh, and at uh, on the label and um, maybe uh, my touring gigs and all, all those things because there is some kind of like association and um, also it means all the investment I put into their tracks because it is financial investment. Maybe I can actually get some get some back when they get, when they when they deliver that banger, that big big record. The plan is I hope it would be with us, but um, again I'm flexible, but you know I'm I'm realistic as well. Sure. Um, yeah, cool. Is there any questions from the um, the Facebook feed? Can you see that? No, mate. No. Well, there's a Facebook feed up. Um, just give us two seconds. Can't see it at all. Let's see. This is all going to be edited anyway, so I hope. Oh, this is <laughs> on that case, do we top off? This is live, mate. <laughs> is it? I think it's live. I'm pretty sure it's live. No, no, it's been recorded and then it'll be put out. Oh, sweet. I'll sit back. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
I've got a few of them now, and they've all been live. And oh, I'm so well, uh, you know really what? I'm not. <laughs> I'll just get oh, my dog right. humping. My dog's just humping my leg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I just did a um, – I, I, I literally just finished, like, five minutes, ten minutes before we, we took this call, um, a, a, a tutorial for this – for Serato's new plugin. Oh, wow. What's it like? It, man, it's it's, amazing. it's so good. It's you know how your time your time stretch stuff in. Do you use Ableton at all? Or, or what? I, I use Cubase, but I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, and you get you you always get artifacts. Like even if you even if there's a sample that it's like at a hundred. I had a Mariah Carey vocal, mm. and um, and I time stretched it to 123, and it you can't. There's no artifacts. It's just so smooth. Wow. Yeah, it's. It, yeah, and I wanted I like I I chose like uh, Teardrop by Massive Attack and and a Mariah Carey track and and um, Coma Cat just a, just a few mix ones just to show how versatile the plugin was because I need it I've got to like do a tutorial for the a live tutorial for the for the world to see next week. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's really cool. yeah. Sounds brilliant, man. Yeah, they've got me busy, man. They got me really busy. That's good. <laughs> it's good, man. I'll, I, I love it. It's like what I do. If I'm not if I'm not like working or doing anything else, I'm doing a course of some sort of like to do with music, learning something, learning, studying some some plugin or whatever. So yeah, <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, guarantee I'm gonna learn as more from you than you learn from me, <laughs> or at least as much. I definitely think there's gonna be like I said a good a good synergy. So looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah I feel like that. I think that we'll um, we'll be good together. It'll be great. Hopefully, I can come over soon. Well, that's the plan. Again, you know, speaking to a, a B port all about that, and uh, yeah, one way or yep. another. Yeah. Yeah. It's it'd be cold over there now, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. It's well, it's not too bad actually. It's getting uh, for this time of year, it's warmer than it should be. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. Not too yep. bad. Come on. So, what was it? Was it any more of those questions you want to fire? Oh yeah. Um, just a few, maybe one, one or two more. Um. Oh, what what do you look for in an artist that's um that's seeking to be signed by you? Um, what I always look for is just as much width of of originality as possible. Um, as in, I want I want the music to be colourful if possible. Um, again, I want them to just make to just be themselves and not kind of follow that kind of typical sound that's popular at that at that moment. Um, and usually, just someone who's cool, easy going, someone that's that, that, that's a bit hard to deal with at the very beginning when you're signing a record off them, and or there's all these kind of minions involved, and everyone's kind of trying to make it unnecessarily complicated. Um, I, I try to avoid that because <clears throat> you know, down the road, if things do become complicated, then uh, it's it's it becomes quite painful. So just some someone who's chilled and keen and wants to get on yes so they have to have something unique yeah 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 pretty much yeah 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 cool um well i think we've sort of sort of gone through all my questions uh oh yeah sorry um given that you started your own record label how's that um how's that impacted on your own productions is, that, is it in, in a good or a bad way? No, I, I think um, starting sex recordings has been good because it's given me the, uh, on, on the on the one hand, I've got no restrictions and no uh, other record labels saying, no, no, this isn't suitable for this time of year or this release schedule or this. Um, so I can just put out music that, that I believe in and like and just go for it and then see what happens. Um on the other hand, sometimes it might have been nice having someone saying, to be honest, that might need a tweak or that might need yeah. this or that. And um, but but again, you know, as you go along in any career path, you, you learn as you go. And yeah. um, I've always been very big in self sufficiency. I've always you know always want to be able to stand on my own two feet one way or another, and not kind of need uh, someone else to kind of babysit me. And although it's great releasing on other labels. Um, for audience reach, if you like, or kind of like 
cool association and all that stuff. Uh, I, I think being able to do it yourself and managing managing the, the release properly is uh, it, it seems to kind of work a bit better for me. Yeah. Yeah. Next step, isn't it? Yeah. Good. I'm actually checking out um, the new release on on Beatport today. Um, it's sick. I like it. I like the original. Um, your, I can't remember who it is. Sorry? Your new release on Beatport? I don't know. I'm on circus recordings. Oh, um, oh, the Leonardo one, Moan. It's so good, man. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm a big fan. With, with that release? I just wanted to strip back things to, to, to the basics, so to speak, because after the Circus 15 album, and it was so wide and there's so many major names on, on there and all that, I, I wanted to make sure that the next release was straight back on, onto the dance floor and, you know, business as usual, rather than kind of trying to push it and push it and push it and bigger and bigger and bigger. I just wanted to go back completely the other way. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's a really, really, really strong release yeah, in its own way. Yeah. I really like it. Hey, that's um, it's it's great. It's definitely the best thing I heard all day. <laughs> Every uh, crack on it. Cool. And w- yeah. one question for you. you: You mentioned earlier about um your music for circus is coming along. <clears throat> what yeah. what type of ideas or what musical direction are you exploring? Uh it's it's my own version of Tech House. Okay. It's still, it's still got that um, still sort of got like those um darker undertones but it's it's well and truly funky and um just not as full-on as some of the other stuff that i've that not not, not as like i guess bass driven okay then some of the other stuff i've released but um yeah i'm really liking my sound at the moment actually i've um i've, I've just since since i've um since i've been like in the studio um, and back in australia i've been like studying and like trying to figure out how how to get that sound how to like i think i think maybe like super distorted um hats but sent to a bus yeah and um and yeah i've just yeah i, I think i think you'll like it <laughs> I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to send you and anytime you anytime. And, um, so, sorry no go on you um oh no you're right so what we're saying anytime anytime i want feedback yeah yeah and- Anytime you're ready, you know, just just uh, my criteria that I always say to anyone send to music though is make sure that you've uh, mixed it down and tested it out and you know what it sounds like against other other people's music rather than can because I, I get a lot of demos in and a lot, and a lot of people are like oh, <clears throat> you know here's a track I've just finished 15 minutes ago I want to know what you think of it and for me you know that that means you haven't listened to it in your car you haven't tried to play in a club you haven't played it to your mates. You just want a quick fix, and um, you know that's it's not helpful. I don't think. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Do you um do, do you tend to um uh, stem master you, or or get them uh, or get your your tracks mastered like just straight up? Do you do you mix them and then and then get get them? Like, it, it, it really depends on the project. Um, sometimes I'd say I'd say the exception is we seldom get other people's music stem mixed but but we will if we, if i if i think okay that's it's got something there but it, it needs a, a different mix down um yeah. but it, it's usually <clears throat> the um the pre master comes in uh at minus six and then we just get it analog mastered <clears throat> by we've got a couple of people that do it um that literally use a proper old analog desk and give it the proper warmth and fatness what i'm really interested in and then um we just take it from there, and like you say, everyone gets the proper PR, proper DJ mail out, um, a proper push afterwards. And of course, we only release one track, one EP a month as well, which means okay. we've got like a full four weeks to kind of get behind the track, and it'll do what it's going to do in those four weeks. If it kicks off, great. If it doesn't, it's not going to, and then it'll stay within the catalogue. A lot of other labels release every week now, or every two weeks, and for me, I don't think that's... Um, it's good for the label, but not good for the artist. So I don't do that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah um, I guess you probably wouldn't be able to spend a lot of time on it, like tracks, and I'd probably just be pumping them out like too quickly, wouldn't they? Well, exactly. And you know, when when I'm trying to get the the audience and the DJs to 
get into the rhythm of, of what we're trying to do, um, then if, if we're releasing every two weeks, then they're not going to be bothered uh, very, very yeah. quickly. But if we're releasing every month, <clears throat> and then there's an event every month, and then there's a little kind of like connected story every month, uh, it, it's enough. It's enough for everybody. And I, th- I think one say um, it, it works in its own in, in its own way. Yeah, for sure. Hey, it's interesting what you were saying about um, get getting the tracks um, mastered on the big old analog rig because maybe that's that sound I was talking about earlier that that I was like, how how, how do you get that sound? Because it's all, everything on Circus is really nice and warm and like sort of like yeah, it's got this I guess unique punch. And I've been trying to figure out how to do it <laughs> for, for a long time, but it, it might just be that it might just be that particular desk that's been been mastered on possibly we, we, we use a couple of master engineers but, <clears throat> but one <clears throat> excuse me one guy in particular a guy called walter that that's been around um mixing music in an analog, analog format for like 30 years and he's, he's got like a really cool setup in portugal and um, we send him all our pre-masters now and to be fair it, it does cost probably double what we could get get them done elsewhere digitally but I find that the, the digital um, masters that we get back tend to be a little bit bright and a little bit spiky and just yeah. on that kind of um, warmth or, you know, just that control. But when that's you come what back, it is. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm talking about. It's, it's, not, it's not spiky. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, like, it's, it's like warm and like the, it's, not, it's not too like high end. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, like you say, even if you listen to them on your speakers uh, or in your car or your headphones, it's only when you hear it full blast in a club that you, you realise that it was too bright or, you know, you need to just kind of trust in the analogue mix down sometimes. And, you know, I'd, I'd say uh, 1 in 30, maybe 1 in 20 masters that walter does for us we get them redone because it might be too bassy but generally they're always they're always brilliant yeah cool it'd be interesting i'd love to hear like the difference between um between the, the pre-master and the master um just just so i just so i can hear just so I yeah can, cool yeah, well just, just if, on you, it, on it. if you want me to just send send you over a couple there's no problem yeah i'd love I'd, I'd, I'd love to hear that i think it'd be be good for me because um i'll be able to hear what's going on there i might just have a look at the facebook feed because i swear this was supposed to be a, a live feed hey let's have a look <laughs> a, li- a live q a let's be real quick everybody um does it does it keep um oh this isn't live okay <laughs> okay cool 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 wait thanks guys <laughs> so, <laughs> all right mate yeah great so um that's all the questions i had for you um is there anything you'd like to know like what i'm up to or yeah i, I, I wouldn't mind um you, you mentioned a couple of days ago about upcoming releases uh i wasn't too familiar with the, the, the labels to be honest so could well, you tell us a, a little bit more about them yeah um so uh, I've had a, I had a couple of releases come out um, that I did prior to um, prior to winning, but um, I, I had I was working on um, an EP for Basic Records, which is like an up and coming um, sort of progressive tech uh, Aussie label that's yeah. um, really sort of really taking off. It's got that Aussie sound, but um, I was gonna I've just been took me ages to mix that down because I wasn't happy with it and. Um, that's coming out in November. Well, my sound sort of changed a lot since then as well. Um, and then um, Bunny Tiger. I'm, I'm doing. I'm, I asked, got asked to do a remix for Bunny Tiger for um, for these other guys that were in the competition as well. Oh, so cool. I did that. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's cool because I like. I used to play a lot of stuff. A lot of it's for Bunny Tiger dub. So I think that's a little bit more like more underground, not so you know easy. Yeah, but um. That's good. I was, I was stoked to ask for that. And now I'm just I've just been working just been working on this. Cool. <clears throat> on well, you know, keep on get, getting your music together. And, and, and like I say, of, of course, you know, it's really about 
your relationship with me and Circus Recordings and all those things. But but at the same time, if you do make a, some music that isn't appropriate for us, then you know the first thing I'll do is help you get it signed somewhere else. Yeah, you right. Know? It's, it's not all just about me because obviously you would have seen that this year I've had music personally on um, like Knee Deep and Sound, Time Rebels, and you know, and the, and the labels are slightly different. And um, sometimes because I make a wide range of house and techno, then yeah. it's more appropriate to put it on a on a label that's different. So again, you know, happy to help you as well as your connection with Sex Recordings. Um, yeah, cool. I, um, yeah, I, I might, yeah, I, I think, I think what I'm, I think what I'm working on now is, um, sort of on, on the ball for circus recordings anyway, but I, I, I did make a few tracks and then I was like, oh, nah, this isn't, this isn't right. But, but I really wanted to focus on, on music for, for your label. But, um, also, also I wanted you to know that I am actually working on stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Because it's been what like six weeks or like two two months now, and I haven't actually sent you anything. So, I am I am actually doing stuff. <laughs> it's cool. like like I say, even if you give me a record today, uh, I couldn't release it until for a couple of months anyway. At least three or three or four months anyway. So you know, just make sure that the, you know send me two or three, and then let's figure it out from there. Yeah, and would it be would it be uh, a like a, a double EP or just a one track? Who knows, man? Some, it, it, could, it could be one, could be two, could be three, could be four, could be one with two remixes. It could be one on its own. It, it, and honestly, I don't know until I hear it. Yeah, there's there's never any kind of like exact science to it. It's all, it's all about the track. I mean, of course, this Moon record that came out this week, it was unusual that I just have one and two remixes, but that's the way it went. In fact, that Moon track by Leonardo, um, it came with the two remixes. And uh, he provided them, so that's just the way it went on this on this particular release. So it's different every time. Yeah, for sure. So he's he's not he's not signed with you, is he? Well, he is for for a single, and in in the contract, uh, it suggests that you can send more. But like I said, like I said earlier, I'm I'm, I'm kind of flexible, um, yeah. and kind of the, the idea for a lot of people signing to circus is to get to play the events when they can. And um, like I said, if, if you are releasing music on about twenty labels, then it's it's going to be difficult for me to kind of support you at the events. Um, but again, it's all about the track. If you release one record and it's a big hit, and I'm I'm able to kind of um, quantify booking you at the events because people want to see you uh, or a artist, then then I will. But some, sometimes. It's it's a bit of a moving a moving target as well, you know. Sometimes I, I just want to book people that I really love, um, that have been on the label for like a, like a, for a couple of years, like Harry Romero. We finally managed to get him to the Warehouse Project and to Circus in Liverpool a couple of weeks ago, and he, you know he's he's amazing. He's an unbelievable person and an unbelievable DJ, even better producer. So it was just great to have him on board. Yeah, yeah. There's a solid there's a solid crew there. Hey. Yeah. As a, as a great crew, I just went through. I was like, oh, what have I just won? <laughs> <laughs> well, again, again, man, you know, each uh, each each release or each uh, event and everything's on its merits. And um, and I'm I'm hoping that we. I, I think we're going to become mates easily, but I think it's all about the, all about the music and uh, making sure that you know you connect with the label, and then from that be able to connect with the audience. And then um, hopefully, you know, it will be the beginning of your new career path. That's hopefully. Cool. Right, I just got an email in. Quick. Have you got any um, releases coming up? Myself. Yep. No, it would be because I've just had uh, uh, this and that with David Scalacci, then Deep and Sam with Hot and 82, and one, and of course the Circus 15 album all this year. I've kind of eased off it. Even I've got like 30, 20 to 30 tracks finished, mastered, like songs. Um, I probably could release two albums tomorrow. Uh, I've got nothing officially uh, scheduled to, to come out. I'm just having a little, a little breather. 
Um, I've got a few labels asking me for stuff, and then I'll just see. But um, again, I'll hope. Hopefully, I'm going to make some decisions in that area this this week. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. Andy having a good back catalog. Hey. I've got too many. It's it's ridiculous. But the, the way I work, I, I don't know if it's like anybody else or many people. I, I, I make my track and then I'll I'll leave it. Then I'll go back to it. And maybe then I'll I'll add some extra sounds or some more drums to, to, to the finished WAV, to the finished pre-master. Um, and then I'll, I'll edit I'll I'll edit that and then I'll overdub and then maybe I'll add some effects to, to, to that so it becomes Chunkier and chunkier and chunkier, but I'll always keep it so it's within the range of the pre-master, and then I'll get it mastered, and it goes, <laughs> and it goes chunky. And like oh. and more, more often than not, I add a, a, a drum loop at the very last thing before I get a sense, a sense to be mastered. Really? Wow, yeah. that's that's different, hey. Yeah, well, I mean, just because I, I played it out, and 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 it's not as chunky as I would like. Then rather than going through the whole process, I'll, I'll just kind of try to sneak in a drum loop or sneak in some effects or maybe a little melody or edit it from like eight minutes down to six or something like that, just to make it more punchy to the point. And yeah, right. certainly well, I've, I've, did, I've, I've done that with every track I've released this year. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, that's true. Do you layer a few kicks up, like two or three kicks just straight up into it? It, it really, it really depends. It yeah. Depends. I, I, I try to, I try to avoid it, um, because it can, it becomes cumbersome. But um, again, it, it's all to do with the particular track. Uh, for me, what's really important is it, it, it kicks on the dance floor, even if it's like a, a song, like the Vanity record on Crosstown Rebels. It needs it to bang, even though it was like a story. You know, it needs to be both. I, I find that I am, um, like. I'm getting a lot better now, but I find, and it's something I don't like, is that my kicks are too that that they're too they're too bassy, and I want them to sit a little bit higher, like like that River Star kick, or like like your kick as well. I, I was listening to a track the other day, I was like, oh, this sounds like that same sort of kick. I don't know where it's supposed to be hitting, but well, maybe maybe I'm just like yeah. So, so sometimes, I, you know, I mean, it's not any secret that, you know, I, a lot of people just use two kicks, one for low low range and one for high range, and just, and just EQ them accordingly. You know, so your high one's doing one thing and your, other, and your low kick's doing And then maybe your bass and then even your drum loops or whatever are kind of like dancing around the middle. But again, it's just making a punch. It's You can't really kind of, for me, have one particular uh, kind of system for different music, you know, it, yeah. it really depends. I like to say, ideally one fat kick, but um, again, who knows? Yeah, for sure. Um, and with your with your bass, would you have like would you have the track more bass driven or kick driven? Like, would you would you would you cut a bit of sub out of like your kick or your bass, or whether or not? Um, sorry, whether you wanted. Uh, whichever one you wanted to sort of drive the track, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I, you know, I usually kind of, um, out of all, the, all these years, the one thing I can kind of like uh, struggle with is my kick and bass. I'm always, it's the hardest thing to do for me, always. Even, even though I kind of I get it right in the end, but um, it's usually a lot to do with, with, with trial and error for me. I, I always want the, the, the track to kind of kick and, and the... I, Almost put the kick and bass in the same range in, in some ways, but um, again, just a sneaky little bit of side chain and sometimes helps and it keeps the the bass kind of quite high up in the mix. But again, it depends what type of track I'm kind of I'm, I'm trying to achieve. If you listen to some of my tracks, the bass is super low in the mix and you can only hear a rumble, and it's all about the drums. Other times, um, I, I find even though the bass can really pump a track, it can also make it a bit kind of um, more mellow sometimes, even though it's a big bass line, and the drums always make a crack. And I like I like tracks to crack, you know. So it's more of a DJ tool. But again, it really depends on the project. So what what um can you tell me like um some of your, your secrets to get your, to get your drums really really sort of 
cracking through? Is there something um, that you might always do? Um, yeah, I mean, obviously, the, the first thing I do is make sure, ironically, is make sure that the kick's really low, uh, sorry, really low in the mix and nothing is kind of um, cooking too, too much in the red. I mean, I, I, have my, I have my kicks on my desk about minus 12, minus 13, and then work around that. So, so my drums are always kind of able to kind of pop a little bit more, um, and nothing's getting in the red. And that's when you, you, you when you do give the pre-master to the master and engineer, because the dynamic range is so kind of what uh, there's so much space. Um, he's able to kind of really make a punch at times. On the other hand, you know, sometimes not always, but I might send my stems off to be mixed down because <clears throat> I really can't be asked just going over and over and over and over and over and I find this counterproductive for me to, to sometimes spend weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks mixing down a track when I can um, get the track up to like a 98% level um, and send the stems off and then the stems come back mixed it sounds nice and chunky and that's when at that point I can do the additional overdub process and the editing at yeah. that point and kind of decide maybe do a sneak in a high kick, do a sneak in an extra drum loop. Um, does it need anything? Does it need shortening? But it, it's it's always kind of a, like a different process from track to track. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's always different. Hey. Cool. All right. Cool, man. Well, I, I think yeah, I think that's all. I think we can probably wrap it up now. Um, yeah. Been fun. Yeah, it's been good, good to good. chat, chatty man. And no, it's been good to uh, be grilled. And sometimes it's always, it's what's really, really good for me is sometimes I can answer these questions that I didn't even know I I knew the answers to. <laughs> so <laughs> that's always quite fun. But look, man, it, it I mean, looking at your studio and stuff, I'm really, really excited to be able to, um, you know, just see how, what what you can do because I'm, I'm like I say, I know this track. These tracks you're going to send me are going to be technically brilliant. So I'm just looking yeah. forward to that. Oh, yeah. cool. well, I'm stoked, man. I'm, um, I'm really excited to get things happening. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I've, been, I've been, been doing a lot of work. So you'll be hearing from me real soon. Um, All right, yeah. Well, thanks, man. No worries. Good to chat, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Everyone. Okay, man. See ya. Bye.